I know I know the college life is really enticing and everything. I, I told you I went through it. Like I had a whole like lukewarm season where I was just out here in the streets. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new and you haven't seen my oh what? Whoa 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 whoa. I know I haven't filmed in a while, but dang, what was that? What was that? Anyways, we're gonna try this again. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you've seen my face before. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Destiny. And if you see my, oh wow, wow. You know it's been a while when you forgot your own intro. We're gonna try one more time, one more time. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Destiny, and if you've seen my face before and you haven't subscribed yet, then baby, what are you doing? Subscribe. Yeah, yeah, we got it. So, as y'all can tell by the title, we're about to be talking about dun, 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 college. Because honestly, guys, like, I'm an expert. I am officially a college expert because I graduated. Da, da. I literally started this YouTube channel freshman year of college. And now I'm a grad. All glory to God. Because Lord knows I was tempted to drop out every single semester. So now I feel like I am knowledgeable enough to help out the newbies because there's lots of people who are just starting college and they're starting college as a Christian so personally for me I considered myself a Christian when I came to college but I came to college with oracle cards I came into college with the whole new age mindset so yeah instead of reading my bible I was praying to angels and doing card readings I did end up giving my life to Christ while I was in college and then I had to go a whole journey while I was in college. So I experienced a lot. I've experienced the whole lukewarm season, the whole wanting to fit in with everybody, the whole like how do I be set apart in college? Like how how can I walk out this walk while I'm in college? There's temptation everywhere. It's just how? How is that possible? And I know there are probably some believers who just started college who are probably asking themselves the same thing. They're probably like wow like how am I gonna be a light while I'm in college? Like how can I be set apart? How can I not be like people of this world while I'm in college? There's a whole stigma around college and college life and college culture. And a lot of it contradicts our faith and what's expected of us as believers. So I'm here to help y'all out with that. Now, with all that being said, let's get right into the video. I gave you guys a little bit of my background. I did come to college a Christian, but I wasn't really a Christian. So long story short, I came to college with the expectation to wild out. The first night where my family helped me move in, as soon as they left, I downloaded Tinder. The, within the first week, I had two hookups. I was out here. I was really trying to wild out, mainly because I felt very sheltered growing up. I wasn't able to go out. I never been to no parties. I wasn't really able to do like, I wasn't really able to like hang out with my friends and, and do stuff like that. I can't relate to y'all who was out there just going to parties and having fun and doing all that stuff in high school because that was not me. When I went to college, I went to college with the intent to wild out. Like that was just 100% my heart posture. I just wanted to have fun. I wanted to party. I wanted to get drunk. I wanted to meet guys. I wanted to do all this stuff. So yeah, I had some like wild experiences in college. I experienced the party. I experienced the drugs. I experienced the drinking, the getting crossfaded getting high all the time. The guys the sleeping around. I experienced the college life. I'm telling you right now, you're not missing out on anything. If anything, it just caused soul ties. It caused heartbreak. It caused a bunch of things that could have been avoided. But one thing about the enemy, he loves to make these worldly things look so pleasurable and desirable and you just want them so bad. Like a lot of my issues, <laughs> a lot of things I dealt with could have been avoided. But I had to find all that out for myself um, and that's why I'm here to help you guys out so you don't make the same mistakes. I came up with a list of advice for you guys so I'm gonna just start going through it. Number one on this list, community is important. Personally for me, I did have friends. God removed them off of my life except for one person. 
God removed everybody else. He literally snatched them away. And I did have to go through a period of lonely loneliness like that when I was transitioning from the new age of being in the world to giving my life to Christ and walking this walk. I basically was in isolation. I only had like one friend and I was in isolation majority of the time. God was just working on me. It was just me and God. And after a whole like year and a half of honestly me like not having like friends like that, he finally blessed me with a community and one thing I was praying for was a Christian community because I'm not gonna lie guys like I had friends but they were worldly friends and when you're walking this walk it's very important to have a community around you people who can hold you accountable people who can feed you when you're going through the struggle when you're going through stuff going to worldly friends when you're going through like tough times in college because trust me you will have some stressful nights you're gonna be overwhelmed you're gonna have like six exams and homework to do and projects to do and you're gonna, probably some of you guys are gonna be working and it's just gonna be a lot at some point like honestly there's gonna be times where you're literally just relying on energy drinks you're gonna feel so overwhelmed with life and you're gonna want friends to talk to one of the most important things is having the community around you because like you really do need people to hold you accountable and hold you up and uplift you and speak life into you when you aren't feeling like speaking life into yourself because you know you're learning you're learning how to be an adult this is new for you you're away from home there's a lot of things that's gonna happen and but these worldly friends they not gonna help you you're gonna try to cope like these people in the world holy spirit should be helping us cope <laughs> okay god god's word should be helping us cope but also the community to you know having people cover you in prayer when you don't feel like praying for yourself like that kind of stuff is important people in the world they're gonna tell you to have a drink people in the world they're gonna tell you oh let's just go out clear your mind people in the world are gonna tell you oh let's go meditate let's go let's go to a yoga class like people in the world they're gonna lead you astray so it's really community is important if you don't have a, a good like godly community already pray for one because God will provide I was praying for one and he actually supplied me twice <laughs> Like now I have an amazing community of believers. Now I have people I can go to when times are tough that will literally cover me in prayer at a drop of a hat. But literally, when you have kingdom friends, you can be going through something and they'll randomly hit you up like, yo, you were placed on my heart. God placed you on my heart. What's up? It's crazy. It's like they really got your back in a way that people in the world cannot have your back. Like you need the community to hold you accountable when they see you walking out because it can, ha it can happen. One thing I have to say, if you fall, get back up as soon as possible. Because when I first came on to Christ, I would fall and have slip ups and fall back into sin, stuff like that. Enemy would come from my brain and attack me like crazy and make me feel like I wasn't worthy, make me feel like God didn't love me anymore. He'd be like, you might as well go on and do this, this, and this, this too, because you already did this and God doesn't love you. And he will really just come for your mind. He will come for your throat. Run to God. Jesus knows you're going to fall. He knows you're going to make mistakes. Don't use it as an excuse to sin though, because there there is a difference between falling and genuinely like having a struggle and there's a difference between willingly sinning and then making a mistake. Like, you know, if that makes sense. Like there are people who will willingly sin and be like, yeah, I'm gonna go out and get drunk, but God's gonna forgive me. There's a difference. Do not use God's grace and forgiveness as an excuse to sin. There's a difference. There's a difference between falling short and being lukewarm. And number two, dealing with temptation. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's temptation everywhere, everywhere, everywhere in college. So how do you deal with that? One, <laughs> prayer, fasting. You need to learn how to deny your flesh. When you have an urge to do something you know you're not supposed to do, you need to learn how to literally tell your flesh no. You have the power to tell your flesh no. And one thing that really did help me deny my flesh was prayer and fasting, for sure, 100%. Because if you learn how to deny food <laughs> honestly <laughs> those little sexual desires that little craving for alcoholic beverage craving for drugs whatever it may be trust me you can get a hold of that and also like your surroundings watch who you surround your people with get get closer to god getting closer to god developing a true heart after god make sure you're in your word make sure you're getting to know him building a relationship with him because ultimately those things, it comes down to your relationship with God. If you don't really have a tight relationship like that with God, then nothing's really stopping you from sinning or like falling into temptation. If y'all are in a relationship, a committed relationship, and your boyfriend or your girlfriend say, don't do this because it hurts me. Because you love them, because you care for them, what are you going to do? You're not going to do that or break that 
boundary because you care for them. It's the same way with God. When you develop a true relationship with God, because that's essentially what it is, it's, it's a relationship. You're not gonna wanna do anything that hurts him. So you know you going out, getting hammered, getting drunk, getting wrecked is not only hurting yourself, but it's also hurting God. It hurts God's heart. You're not gonna wanna do that. A lot of people don't understand. It's not from a whole standpoint like, a religious standpoint like oh my gosh god said not to do this so i can't do it it's more of a one god doesn't want you to do it to protect you it's to, to keep yourself from harm he knows how damaging these actions can be to us and it hurts him too you have to change your perspective on this if you are married and your husband or your wife tells you not to do something you're not going to do it because you love them and you respect them and it's the same way with god but a lot of people don't do it like that so definitely change your perspective and it will help you want to fight against temptation more speaking about relationships and god another tip be intentional about your time with god i'm telling you right now it is so 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 easy to get carried away especially if you're like me and you take and you were taking five six classes every semester and then also trying to work and then also trying to have a social life very much easy to put god <laughs> on the back burner like it's very easy to wake up in the morning go on about your day and then give god the last like five minutes of your night you know just that good night prayer and then repeat the next day if you're talking to god for only two to five minutes every single day it's kind of hard to keep a lasting relationship imagine having a boyfriend or girlfriend and only talking to them for like two to five minutes every day at the end of the day that relationship ain't gonna last i'm sorry i don't know about y'all personal standards or whatever but for me personally if i have a man's and he's not talking to me he talks to me at his very last of the day where he's tired and he ends up falling asleep on me so we don't even really get to talk like that because y'all know that's how it be you have a whole day then you get home try to talk to god then you knock out in the middle of prayer because you're tired i'm sorry but he would not be my man's no more you gotta be intentional well i was really big on planning um my calendars and planners are really essential in college i would not make time for that i kind of would just you know, wake up, say a quick prayer, if I remember. And it will be very, good morning, thank you for waking me up type thing, you know. Don't do that. Be intentional. If you gotta wake up an hour earlier or 30 minutes earlier to just strictly set time apart for God, do that. If you gotta go to sleep later to spend time with God, do that. And then throughout your day, make sure you're intentionally talking to God. Talk to Him. He cares about the little things. Make time for Him. Just like you would make time for your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mom, your dad, your auntie, your uncle. Just time, just how you would make time for your friends. Make time for God. Put him first, too. If you put anything else before God, then that's just an idol. Trust me, I know it's hard. You're going to have times where you're too tired. But honestly, a lot of this walk, it's a sacrifice. If God can send his whole son to die for you on the cross, you can wake up 30 minutes earlier. And not only does starting off your day with God make the day go by so much smoother, it's like when you have that partnership with God, he can help you throughout. Like literally you have the Holy Spirit, he's your helper. There's so many times throughout college, he would help me study, help me in class. He would help me with like so many things. I kid, like when I say all glory to God on my graduation cap, I'm not capping because there's so many times. Honestly, there's lots of classes and exams I should have failed, but I didn't. He wants to help you. Like the, the Holy Spirit is literally here to help you. When you have temptation, when you're in a difficult situation, when you're in a pickle, God is there to help you literally i'd be walking to class with my headphones in y'all got airpods talk to god people not gonna know people won't think you off the phone <laughs> just talk to god while you're walking to class talk to god while you're at the gym make time for god be intentional i really wish i was doing that from like the beginning i went through a whole lukewarm season and it was one of my biggest like for it was a whole entire fall semester i was lukewarm that whole entire fall semester i was partying i started smoking again I was drinking, I was getting crossfaded. I was literally doing, acting like as if I was in the world. And you know how it happened? Because that was also one of my busiest semesters. I was never home. I was always on campus, busy. Like literally, early in the morning, I'd be getting up, going to the gym, 6 a.m. And then I would not get home till like 10 p.m. I'd be gone and I get home and I'm draining. And I go to sleep and I don't have time for God. And it's so easy to get in that pattern where you're just like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll talk to God tomorrow. Next thing you know, it's been a whole like two months and you have not really talked to God at all. <sighs> Please be intentional about your time with God. I don't care if you have to literally block off time in your calendar throughout the day, 15 minutes here and there, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night. Be intentional about your time with God. It's really important. And another tip, just be wise. And if you feel like you're not getting prayers answered or you feel like you're in a situation you don't know, if you feel like you can't find your answers in prayers, you feel like God's not answering your prayers, you feel like you're not finding it in God's word, this is where you have to go seek wise counsel. Go seek your believer friends. Go seek pastor at your church. 
go seek someone if you feel like you don't have wisdom pray for wisdom <laughs> because god will give it to you like if you feel like you shouldn't be doing something if you have to even ask like mm, is this okay like should i do this be wise we are adults you ain't college you ain't living at home with your parents no more and if you are because you could still be in college either way you're in college you're an adult you're not seen as a child anymore be wise use wisdom and one last thing do not feel pressure to live that college life the sex the partying the drugs all that stuff it's a deception that whole oh it's just a college life it's normal you're young you know you have to you have to have that college experience lie straight from the pits of hell lie straight from the enemy you do not need those things i'm telling you right now you don't need that it's a waste of time it's a waste of time i can't stop you you're gonna do what you want to do at the end of the day but it's a waste of time those things are only temporary pleasures you only get true fulfillment from jesus himself all those things temporary and then they open up doors and also all those things they literally lead you further away from christ it's not worth it don't feel like just because everyone else around you is doing it i know i know because i've been in that situation before everyone around you might be drinking doing drugs and then you're the only one just there and you might start to feel left out the enemy might start trying to attack your mind make you feel bad make you feel lame because you're not conforming to the world and doing what everybody else is doing but just remember that when you're a believer you're supposed to be set apart. We're supposed to be set apart. We are not a part of this world. We're supposed to be different. We're not supposed to be like everyone else. Who knows, you sitting out and you're not participating in those activities, it could start a, it could really spark up a conversation. People could really be like, wow, like, why aren't you doing this? Like, how come you don't drink? How come you don't do drugs? How come you don't have sex? People, you might actually be a light in someone else's life by like living out your walk and doing what you're supposed to do like it can, you can actually impact someone because yeah they might make fun of you in the moment they might it might be weird you might feel weird in the moment but at the end of the day that little seed that you planted could really be fruitful later on in their lives so it's really important to just walk out your walk keep christ in the center keep doing what you got to do I know, I know the college life is really enticing and everything. I, I told you I went through it. Like I had a whole like lukewarm season where I was just out here in the streets. But <laughs> don't be like me. Uh, I know it's your freshman year. Um, I'm not saying don't have fun, and that's the thing. Like our definition of fun is different than the world's definition of fun. Don't feel like just because you're in college that you have to do these things because you really don't. And I'm not gonna lie. Now I'm having so much more fun with my group of like believer friends than I did when I was in the world. Like that stuff literally just leads you away from Christ and it leads you into like misery, it leads you into depression because you're just like seeking fulfillment and it's not in any of those things. Just go out, explore, have fun. You know, there's more than just drugs and sex and clubbing. Don't be conformed to this world. Have fun, do good in school, study. Don't be like me. Cause like I said, I only graduated by the glory of God because I should have failed so many classes but I didn't so if this video was helpful at all don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel baby